In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how one performs multiple regression analysis using Microsoft Excel. We have MBA team winning percentage. We have percentage of field goals made by that MBA team. We have percentage of three-point shots made by the team's opponent. And we have the average number of turnovers committed by the team's opponent. So these are defensive measures, and these are offensive measures. This is an offensive measure. Now, obviously, there's more than three variables that determine a team's winning percentage. But uh, we're going to assume that maybe these are the most three most important measures. Now, to do multiple regression analysis, we click on Data Analysis. Scroll down through to Regression. We click OK. We define the Y variable, including the label. We define the X variables, including the labels. Because we included the labels, we click on Labels. And then we want to define the output range. And I like to put it below the data. And then we want the residuals so we can do some testing of the regression errors assumption assumptions. Hit OK. And we have our regression output. Now I'm going to format it so it's a little easier to read. Maybe use three decimals. We don't need this part of the output. And then I'm going to move this stuff, the predicted values, and the residuals up here side by side with the original data. And I'm going to delete this stuff here. Okay. Now we've the predicted model is the equation y hat or the predicted winning percentage. It, it is equal to the intercept plus this coefficient times that variable plus this coefficient times that variable, plus this coefficient times that variable. In equation form, we have y hat equal to the intercept plus the first estimated coefficient times x1 plus the second coefficient, a negative 2.589, times x2 plus the final estimated coefficient times x3. Now, we can compute the predicted values. For Atlanta, for example, the predicted winning percentage is 41.928%. We can calculate this value by plugging these three numbers. The first one being Atlanta's field goal shooting percentage. They made 43.5% of their field goals. Their opponent's three-point shooting percentage Atlanta's opponents make 34.6% of their three-point shots. And Atlanta's opponents' turnovers. Um, Atlanta's opponents turn the ball over 13.206 times per game. We plug these three numbers into this equation, x1, x2, and x3. We do the arithmetic, and we get Atlanta's predicted winning percentage. I notice that it's not a very good prediction. The predicted value is much larger than Atlanta's actual winning percentage. Therefore, the residual is very, very large in absolute values, a long ways away from zero. And the bigger the residual, the poorer the model does at predicting winning percentage. The predicted value is much larger than the winning percentage, and that's why the residual is negative, because we take this and subtract off the predicted y which gives us a negative 1 point, or a negative 15.428. Now the model does a be much better job of predicting Chicago's winning percentage. Notice how close Chicago's winning percentage is to its actual winning percentage. And to compute Chicago's predicted winning percentage, we plug those three numbers into the equation, x1, x2, and x3, and we would get 32.8, which which is really close to the observed winning percentage of Chicago, which is why the residual is so 
close to zero. Okay. Now because these numbers vary from these numbers, the model doesn't do a perfect job of predicting winning percentage. No model is going to do that. Now, if you look at the adjusted R square, it reflects this. What the adjusted R square says is that 51% or 0.511, 51% of the variation in winning percentage, and there is variation here, right? You know, you got 72.4, 41.2, 24.2. So there's variation in winning percentage. So 51% of this variation is explained by the predicted model. And that's what that adjust R square means. Now we're going to do the uh, hypothesis test for each of the variables included in the model. Now, as background information, I want to point out that the T stat is found by taking the estimated coefficient and dividing by its standard error. And the T stat is actually quite large. It's a long ways away from zero. And we know that because the P value is really, really close to zero. Um, the second variable, the second variable, uh, percentage of three point shots made by a team's opponent, is negative and not as far from zero as X1 percentage of field goals made. For that reason, the p-value is not as close to zero as was the case for this estimated coefficient. Now, because these, uh, because the, the p-values are close to zero, less than 0 0.05 or 5%, we can say these variables are highly significant predictors of winning percentage. Now, because these, because our variables are highly significant predictors of the winning percentage, the F statistic is very, very large. As a result, its p-value, which Excel calls significance F, is really close to zero. And what, this, what these two numbers suggest is that the model is significant. In the following video, we're going to take the residuals that we have here and we're going to use them to test the four assumptions of the classical linear model. Uh, the first one being constant variance, the next one being the normality assumption of the error. Uh, we're also going to uh, test the linearity of the model. We're going to test that the model is in fact linear. And we're also going to test for autocorrelation in the errors.